the two types of mRNA oh. vaccines in the second row here, um, it's under the relative risk column that we're looking at, have um, the, the, the all-cause mortality is higher than among those who were unvaccinated, as I believe the comparison here. Yep. It's 1.03, where one is the baseline rate. Whereas for the adenovirus vectored vaccines, of which there are also two types, J&J um, &J and AstraZeneca, the relative risk uh, also, you know, which is sort of a stand-in for all-cause mortality is 0.37, which is to say uh, the adenovirus vectored vaccines um, reduce um, all-cause mortality uh, quite substantially, actually, and the mRNA vaccines do not. In fact, um, you know, the, the numbers are so close as to effectively make it make it equal. Um, although, in fact, it's slightly higher. Well, there are certain nuances we have to add in mm -hmm. order to understand what these numbers mean. But the, the basic pattern is the adeno vector, the adenovirus vectored vaccines substantially reduced all cause mortality, as one would hope from any good vaccine. And uh, the mRNA vaccines, the lipid nanoparticle vectored vaccines, very slightly and maybe not importantly, increased all-cause mortality. Um, so, and I should point out uh, in Dr. Ben's interview, which I suggest everybody look at on Unheard, we will provide a link to it. She is very clear on the fact that both types of vaccine appeared to reduce COVID significantly. Mm -hmm. So to the extent that the mRNA and mRNA vaccines have actually increased the amount of mortality, right? What it says is that they are doing some kind of harm that more than compensates for the benefit that people got from the reduction in the amount of COVID. Yep. Now, mm -hmm. I am cautious about this whole realm because the studies that were being looked at were studies that were done by the manufacturers Right. Um, and so the question is how uh, scrupulous were the manufacturers? And a lot of the work suggests maybe not so scrupulous. So was there a COVID benefit? Probably, but we don't really know because there's lots of reason to wonder what happened here. But the point is the all-cause mortality number is much harder to game, right? Yep. People either died or they didn't, and they were either in the placebo group or the treatment group. And exactly. the point is those numbers are actually with short of outright fraud those numbers allow you to do this kind of analysis. And they suggest that there is a massive difference between the adenovirus vectored vaccines and the mRNA vaccines. Furthermore, actually, it hadn't occurred to me until just now as you were talking, um, you know, the, what a vaccine is supposed to do and what these vaccines particularly do has been changing. Like they have just been changing our expectations about what we should demand of vaccines from from the moment that we first had access or were hearing about them and then had access to them through now. And um, a number of us are, you know, throwing up the alarm over this, but for the most part, people are like, oh, well, they never said it would reduce death. It's just supposed to reduce, um, you know, symptoms and make it, you know, less bad for you, which of course is not true. That is not nothing they ever said. However, this suggests it doesn't matter. So as much as we have been talking for uh, you know, a, a very long time about uh, focusing only on mortality with regard to COVID is too narrow a scope. Uh, that long COVID is is real, and there's a lot of things that might be passing under long COVID that aren't that, and might be vaccine effects and this, that, and the other. But you know, there there is real stuff there, and this, of course, being a Franken virus, we don't know. We cannot predict with as much specificity or reliability what it's going to do in the future because it didn't evolve in a cave in bats, right? And, you know, it evolved through serial passage um, research in a in a lab maybe with ferrets. Uh, so, you know, that changes expectations about what to predict next. But regardless, regardless of what other benefits it may or may not be providing, if the mortality is the same-ish, uh, then that is the bottom line. Well, okay. The mortality is... The same-ish as, as if you were not uh, vaccinated against COVID with these vaccines at all. Right. So in principle, I agree that almost everything ought to show up in the all-cause mortality data. Right? With the caveat that we need longer time. Well, that's that's yeah. where I'm going next. Yeah. Part of the problem here, right, is that one of the things that is most 
troubling about the way, and there are many troubling things about the way the manufacturers ran their tests. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that is most troubling is that at the point that they had early numbers that they claimed said that these things were spectacularly effective uh, at preventing COVID and very, very safe, what they did is they vaccinated their control group, right? Now, were you, forget what these people actually were up to, were you a corrupt pharmaceutical manufacturer interested in hiding harms done by your vaccines? Vaccinating your control group is what you would do in order to obscure that. So not saying that that's why this was done, but I am saying that basically there is a predictable loophole in the logic of science as it is applied to clinical trials. And the loophole comes in the form of, should you be in the lucky position of discovering a treatment that is so effective and so safe that everybody should want it, then you are morally obligated to treat your controls because denying it to them would be unfair, right? Mm -hmm. Now, given that we know that that's the way the moral rules of clinical trials work, shooting for that outcome. In other words, this is a perverse incentive. If only we can get to the place where these things look super safe and super effective, then we get to vaccinate our controls, then anything that isn't safe about it will disappear, right? Which then, of course, fits with the bizarre fervor to vaccinate every damn person, Mm -hmm. right? Which also eliminates the natural control group that comes from the fact that a lot of us are, you know, go slow, you're intervening in a complex system hesitant here. Mm -hmm. So in any case, the point is this study, this study done by Dr. Ben and her colleagues is compromised by their own analysis, by the fact that the data they were working from has a very short time horizon because of the way it was collected and then stopped being collected because the control group mm-hmm. disappears. Compromised through no fault of their own and there's nothing they can do about it. Right. And in fact, the data what, do not exist. what they've said is that actually we should be testing these things in a way that we can, uh, we can compare them directly. And in yes. fact, we couldn't do that here and that's unfortunate. But the other point that I want to make is that what that means is that There are two problems with the um, numbers that we have for all-cause mortality here. One of them is that we don't really know all-cause mortality because what you should be doing is tracking the treatment group and the control group two years out, five years out, 10 years, 20 years, and then, you know, ideally what you'd want to know is the ultimate longevity of the people who did and did not get this Mm -hmm. treatment. And then we could say something about what its net effect was, using mortality as a proxy for good and bad health effects. But we can't do that here because, A, it hasn't been very long. So even if they had not vaccinated the control group and these numbers were continuing to inform us, Mm -hmm. it still hasn't been very long. But it's way worse than that because they rushed these things to market having vaccinated the control group, which robs us of the ability to say anything about effects even a couple of years out. Um, So that that is a significant factor. So my point is uh, 1.03 is just barely over one right? It's yeah. probably meaningless in terms of it having increased the risk of death. However, you know what that doesn't contain? It doesn't contain anything about uh, the increase in the rate of cancer that some people believe derives uh, from the mRNA vaccines. Right. So um, the point is, it, let's say that cancer is one of the outgrowths, that these things are carcinogenic in some way. Well, then the point is all of that increase in Uh, mortality will be absent from this study Mm -hmm. and will show up later. And so so the point is 1.03 isn't terribly bad. It is conspicuous in the following way. Now here, this is, sorry that this is so complicated, but but I think it's important to think of it this way. Okay, you've got a number in which the amount of mortality with the mRNA vaccines was slightly elevated over the amount of mortality in people who didn't get them but were otherwise matched, right? So close, effectively the same. Effectively the same, right? However, what that means, to the extent that these vaccines appear to provide a benefit from COVID, 
that means that they did harm of some other kind, like cardiovascular. And right. here's the point. If you knew that, if the work had been done well, right, and you knew, okay, these vaccines create uh, uh, a benefit in terms of COVID and mortality downstream from it, and they create a harm by inducing other pathologies, the absolutely obvious thing to do is to not administer them to everybody. Mm -hmm. right? Those whose at risk comes primarily from COVID might warrant the thing. And those who have very low risk from COVID would, should be protected from them, mm -hmm. you know, at the very least given the other vaccine, right? So the, in the, the fact that we are not in a position to say, look, the thing has an effect on COVID as predicted, as far as we know, right? Maybe not, but it seems to have some benefit for COVID. It has some cost that nobody who isn't at risk from COVID should be exposed to. And the all-cause mortality could be driven way down by not vaccinating people who get no benefit on the COVID side and have only risk from the, let's say, cardiovascular side, mm -hmm. right? That's the obvious thing to do. And the fact that, you know, we're playing some stupid game where the idea is vaccines good. Where are they good for? People. Let's give them to everyone, right? I'm sorry, it's just not the way right now. This and logic let's and let's works. not even pretend to do science and and definitely get rid of the control group. 